Hey everyone! Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I've been spending a lot of time this week trying to make the perfect loaf of bread, but they haven't been turning out right. Honestly, my arms are sore from all the dough kneading. I'm worried that if I don't come up with the perfect recipe soon, I might run out of energy. Or room in my stomach. Ugh. To help find the perfect bread recipe, I started doing some research. Apparently, to get the best bread, you need to use five parts flour for every three parts water. This creates a ratio that we can write as the fraction five over three. Ratios are great because I don't have to use exactly five cups of flour and three cups of water. I can double it and use 10 cups of flour and six cups of water. The problem is that I don't have a pan big enough to fit all of that dough. I know from all of my experimenting that my pan can fit dough made from a maximum of only four cups of flour. Oh, <laughs> I need to use a proportion here. A proportion is an equation that is created by setting two ratios equal to each other. I want to know how much water to use to go with my four cups of flour. So the ratio I'm trying to use looks like this, and I can solve for x by setting it equal to the recipe ratio. Let's take a look at how we can solve proportions like this together. By this point, we're equation solving pros. Having a variable in a denominator like this is new, but I'm sure we can handle it. What do you predict we can do to handle that x in the denominator? Well, every time we want to get rid of a denominator, we just multiply it times both sides of the equation. Do you think I can just multiply both sides of this equation by x? Actually, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. So if I multiply both sides by x, that leaves me with just 4 on the right, and then I have 5x over 3 on the left. Remember, we never want to write this like x5 because that's bad math grammar. Pause the video here and try to finish this equation on your own. You may want to think back to earlier in this unit when we talked about fractions in equations. I can think of this left side as being 5 over 3 times x. And to get rid of a fractional coefficient, I would multiply by the reciprocal. So I need to multiply both sides of this equation by 3 over 5, since that's what I get when I flip this fraction. On the left, the fractions cancel and leave just x. On the right, I'm going to rewrite 4 as 4 over 1, and then multiply straight across to get 12 over 5. And that's our solution for x. I can leave it as a fraction, or if I want, I can divide it to make it a decimal, which would be 2.4. The decimal form is probably more useful for me with my bread recipe, but sometimes decimals can be repeating and go on forever. It's important to be exact with your answers in math class, and fractions will always be exact, even when decimals aren't. So get in the habit of becoming comfortable with fractional answers. Let's take a look at a couple of more complicated proportions with some example problems. In this example, we have to solve for a in the equation 16 over 3a plus 2 equals 4 over 5. We could totally handle this. My goal is to solve for a, and I can't do that if it's stuck in the denominator. So how can I get that whole 3a plus 2 expression out of the denominator? Just like we did with x in my bread problem, I'm going to multiply both sides by this whole thing, 3a plus 2. Notice that I put this expression in parentheses on both sides to show that the whole thing is being multiplied. If we look at the left side, we know that if 16 is being divided by 3a plus 2, then multiplying by 3a plus 2 should cancel it out. But if you ever feel unsure that you're taking the right step, we can always write out our scratch work to make sure that this will simplify to 16. 
Since we know that we want this 3a plus 2 to cancel with the denominator, it's going to be helpful to not distribute it so that we can keep looking at it as one cohesive piece. We can write our numerator as 3a plus 2, all in parentheses, times 16. We can also put the 3a plus 2 in the denominator in parentheses to show that we're grouping them together. Then I can see that with a 3a plus 2 on top and bottom, they will cancel each other out to make 1 times 16, or just 16. On the right side, we can put 3a plus 2 over 1 to make it easier to see that we need to multiply this whole expression by 4. Since we know that 3a plus 2 won't cancel with anything on this side, we can distribute the 4 to multiply both terms to simplify. What will we get when we distribute? That will make this side look like 12a plus 8 over 5. What do you think we should do next? We have options here, but me personally, I'm not a big fan of fractions, so I'd like to get rid of that 5 in the denominator. How do you think we can do that? Yes, we can multiply both sides by 5. Now our equation looks like 80 equals 12a plus 8. That's not bad at all. Pause the video here and finish up this equation yourself. We can use inverse operations to isolate a and get a solution of 6 for a. Let's do one more example together. In this example, we need to solve for n in the equation 3 over 2 equals negative 4n plus 3 over 13 plus n. This might look fancier, but it's really no different than either of the other proportions we've solved. Your goal is really just to get rid of your denominator so that you can solve this like all of the equations you've been solving throughout this whole unit. Pause the video here and give this one a try on your own. I definitely want to get rid of the 2 in the denominator on the left and the 13 plus n in the denominator on the right. It actually doesn't matter which one I do first, so I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by 2. On the left, that's going to cancel and leave just 3. On the right, I'm going to put my 2 over 1 to see that I need to distribute it to the negative 4n plus 3 in the numerator only. That's going to make this negative 8n plus 6 over 13 plus n. Now I'll tackle the other denominator. How can I get rid of that 13 plus n on the bottom of this fraction? Yep, I can multiply both sides by that whole 13 plus n. And I'm going to put it in parentheses when I multiply since it has two terms in it. On the right, that will cancel, leaving just negative 8n plus 6. On the left, since this whole expression is being multiplied by 3, I'll just distribute the 3 to get 39 plus 3n. Even if you get rid of those denominators in the opposite order, your equation should still look exactly like mine now. If you were stuck with the denominators before, pause the video here and try to finish off this equation on your own now. Right now I have n on both sides of this equation. I can't isolate a variable if it's in two places at once, so I need to bring those together. I'm going to add 8n to both sides. Now I'll subtract 39 from both sides and divide both sides by 11. I've run out of room here, so I'm going to put my final answer of negative 3 for n off to the side here. Phew! It might look like a lot of work is on the screen right now, but remember that when you're solving any equation, you just have to focus on one step at a time. Don't let these proportions intimidate you. So what if they have denominators? We could just multiply both sides to get rid of them, and then these are no different than the rest of the equations you've already mastered. Another thing to remember is that the more complicated an equation gets, the more options you have for how to solve it. In fact, there's an activity in your guided notes that you can check out to see some alternate methods for the proportions we just solved together. After that, you'll move on to your practice game. Good luck, and I'll see you next time. Hey.